Time keeps ticking away, doesn't it? Time keeps ticking away, doesn't it? Amen. Yes, it does. Life goes on and on and on and on. You know, I love that, that book by Dr. Seuss, Green Eggs and Ham. It is one of my favorites. I've used it before because it, it really teaches a lesson of what it means to try something. You know, I, I, I think growing up, you probably were the same. Growing up, I'd walk in the house and smell whatever mom was cooking, and I'd say, oh, what are we having tonight? And she would say, we haven't even tried it, David. How, how do you know that it's not good? The nose knows, mom. Of course, 9.999999 times out of 10, except for cream chip beef on toast. How many had that growing up? Okay, the rest of you are lucky. I'm telling you what, that's nasty. Um, we had, my mom had different meals on different days. Thursday was cream, chip, beef on toast. Um, I did not eat on Thursdays. And my mom said, this isn't a cafeteria. I'm not making different things, so you either eat it or you don't. You starve. And so, as you can tell by looking at me, I didn't starve, but I didn't need it, okay? But I learned over the years that, especially when I got into ministry, um, to try the different things that the Lord opened the door and provided for me. I mean, I look back at the beginning of my ministry, and I look at where it is today, and I think to myself, there were so many things he introduced to me right at the beginning of ministry, and about half of them I said yes to. The other half I kept saying, Lord, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for what you have me and what you want me to do next. But here was the thing I discovered after all these years. He wouldn't have asked me if I couldn't do it because he would do it through me, just as he says in 1 Thessalonians. He is faithful to do it for us. So when the Lord speaks, when the Lord shares with you, when the Lord imparts to you a vision or an idea, go for it. Move in it. Find out what he wants you to do. A lot of times he'll move us into one area to expose a completely different area. But if we don't try it, then we may never know what we could really become and how advanced the kingdom could be if we would become an obedient servant. In Mark chapter 3, we find in verses 1 through 5, we find a story that's very familiar to a lot of people. But in this particular uh, passage, we find this truth that is self-evident and relevant even today, all these years later. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall or fail for anything. If you don't stand for something, you'll never know all that God has in store for you or all that he wants to do with you and in you and through you to someone else. So when the Lord sends us a vision, when we, when we get that insight, we need to act upon it. We need to stand up for the faith that we claim in Jesus Christ. See, Jesus had just finished the lesson on the Sabbath there in Mark chapter 2 before we got into this chapter. He was explaining to the Pharisees, if you remember right, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Meaning that we have, we need, we must have a day that is ours. For me, it's not Sunday. I work on Sunday, so I have to have another day. I have to have another day that's just me and his so that I can hear from him, so I can, he can lead, guide, and direct me, so I can stay in step with the Spirit of God and what he wants for this church and in my life. He broke down their religious tradition which was a physical thing, and began to show them a different way. He was trying to challenge them as he's challenging us to move from the physical to the spiritual, to move from the physical polities of life into the spiritual relationship with God, saying this, try it, you might just like it, Sam, but you have to try it. So if you have your Bibles open to Mark chapter 3, I want to read these five verses here for you, and then I want to share with you today on this graduation Sunday what I believe that the Lord is saying to all of us, especially to those who are graduating in different areas of their life, those who are about ready to take a next step in the journey of life. 
but not only for those who are taking the next step, but for all of us. Because today marks off a new day for us. Today marks a day that's different than tomorrow. And tomorrow, I want us to be armed with this in mind, this lesson about trying things you may not know you like. In verse 1 of chapter 3, verse 1, another time, he, that is Jesus, went into the synagogue. A man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man, and Luke, it says, Jesus knew their thoughts. He knew what they were thinking. He knew that they were there with the physical part of life in mind and would miss the spiritual if they didn't open up their hearts to what God was saying. But here in Mark chapter 3, Jesus said to the man, man with the shriveled hand, stand up. I want you to stand up in front of everyone who's here today, the believers, the non-believers, the challengers of faith. I want you to stand up. I want them to see you today. Now, first of all, it's hard to imagine that there was no one else in the temple that day when Jesus called this man to stand up that needed healing and needed a touch. But if we look over in Luke chapter 6, we'll find that Jesus not only knew the Pharisees, he knew what they were thinking, he knew their hearts, but he also knew the heart of every single person sitting in that place. And Jesus just happened to know that this man with the shriveled hand was there because he knew there was no other way. He knew that Jesus was the only way to find the healing that he so desperately needed. He was there for Jesus and Jesus alone, and Jesus knew that. He knew that about him when he said, stand up in front of everyone. He knew he wouldn't shy away. He knew he wasn't going to be that person who raises up, sits down, looks for some, raises up again, hoping somebody else will stand, and if they don't, then they're staying down. No, he popped up. He popped up when Jesus called upon him, and he stood up. Verse 4 says, and then Jesus asked him, Ask them, that is the Pharisees and all who were gathered, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save a life or to kill. But they remained silent. See, they saw Jesus trying to snare them in a trap. I think, I think what the Pharisees didn't understand, what many who were there didn't understand, was Jesus was speaking spiritual life. He was speaking something to them that they had not yet truly experienced or maybe had a taste of but didn't quite yet experience. It says he looked at them while they remained silent in anger, in anger because they of all people should have known the answer. They of all people gathered there should have known what it means to believe and what it means to have confidence. And what it means to be assured of the faith that we proclaim. But they didn't. So Jesus looked at them and he was angry and he was deeply distressed about their stubborn hearts. This is not the way we do things. Don't forget today is the Sabbath. You're not supposed to work. And that includes healing. Don't break this law that we abide by. But Jesus, he was a lawbreaker. He was kind of a, have you ever stop and think about that? I mean, he was a lawbreaker. He broke the law of physical, the physical world, so that the spiritual could come through. He looked at their stubborn hearts and said to the man, now stretch out your hand. And the man stretched out his hand, and the Bible says he stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. What Jesus had called him to, Jesus provided in him because he was willing to stand up for his faith. Now listen to that. 
I know people who are struggling with so many things, afflictions, addictions, and trials, tribulations. I, I know so many people that are suffering with so many things, and I believe that Jesus is trying to get you to stand up in these latter days, stand up so that he can restore his creation, and he'll do so how? Through you, through the body of Christ. Let me ask a question. Don't answer out loud. When's the last time you stood up for something you believed? Regardless of what everybody else was saying, regardless of the worldview, you, you knew and you're knower what you know and that you resisted it. You moved away from it. And you stood up for your faith. And not just stood up. Listen to me. It's one thing to stand up. It's another thing to say no. It's another thing to respond verbally. When's the last time that you had to stand up for your faith? See, because if you have to stand up for your faith and you stand up for your faith, that's a little bit different than standing up for your faith because you know and you're knower that you know, and regardless of the situation, you take a stand. And that's what I'm challenging our graduates to. That's what I'm challenging not only high school, college, community college, tech school, um, and, and our disciple leaders, but every, I'm, I'm challenging everyone to begin to plant your feet in the word of God and make the stand that he has called us to do, to stretch out your hands. And let God restore his creation again to stretch out your hands. That's what I love about lifting my hands during worship. I feel like it's that time where I'm touching. Not only touching God, but I'm also acknowledging my faith in him. We picked the songs this morning for a reason. Because I lift my hands to believe again. Ooh. Isn't that an interesting word that's plopped right in the middle of that? As I was singing it, I was thinking about that. What would, what would it be if I didn't have to believe again? What, what would the wording be if I just believed? Would I have to say again? Or would I have to say, well, now or maybe or should or... But I lift my hands because I believe. Period. Because I believe. I don't lift my hands to re-strengthen myself, revitalize myself for a new day, for a new week. I lift my hands because I believe. And I don't, I don't really care who sees it or who knows it. I lift my hands. Many of you do the same. Now, now don't get me wrong. Just because you don't lift your hands doesn't mean you don't believe. Please do not hear me say that. I know for some, that's, that's not something they, they've ever been accustomed to or, or something they've ever done before. And, but I do challenge you this. Well, you know, try it sometime, Sam. You may find a whole new connection in your time of worship by the simple act of stretching out your hand. So here's the key to our passage today. Jesus called the man to stand up in front of others. He didn't know everybody in there. He didn't know anyone else probably. He was there for one reason. and why. He didn't care who else was there. Oh, man, over the years I've had people say, Pastor, I love the church. I love what you guys are doing there, but there's someone in that church I don't like, so I can't attend. You'd be amazed how many times I've heard that. Um, be amazed. Well, me and this person don't get along, and I can't worship if they're in there because I, I know they're there. Okay, do you know God is there? Do you know God is bigger than that problem and that trouble? But I, I listen, I, I could almost, I could, wow, I could fill a book with people who have fallen into that category because I didn't like somebody. I can't worship if we're with somebody I don't like. So Jesus calls this man to stand up, and I'm sure he's like all of us. There are people in there that, you know, especially the Pharisees who are supposed to be leading the law, directing us in the ways to live for God. Can't imagine what he was thinking when he stood up. Oh, man, they're going to erase my name from the book of life. They don't hold the pen. 
They don't hold the eraser. God does and God alone. You don't have to stand up because of me, Pastor Eli, Pastor Josh, or Pastor Eve. You don't have to stand up for us. You don't have to stand up because we've asked you. We want you to stand up. We want you to lift your hand because God is asking. God is asking it of you. And if he's not asking you, don't do it. Don't do it. Do what the Spirit leads you to do. That's what I'm going to say to you today. So Jesus calls the man to stand up in front of everybody. And faith, your faith, must stand up and stand out. It is like that city on a hill that Matthew talked about in 514. For others to see on a hill, held up, held high because of Jesus. In verse 5, Jesus tells us the man, after he stood, did exactly what the Lord asked him to do. Stretch out your hand, boom, I stretched out my hand. Not knowing what he was going to do. But I believe because of his faith, he was pretty sure what was about to happen. And because he stretched out his hand, it became certain. Now watch this. But some people were looking for a reason to reject him. Reasons to accuse Jesus. Listen to me. There will always be people looking at you, watching you, and find it, to find a reason to reject you, to reject what you believe. You call yourself a Christian? How can you say that? You call yourself a believer? Why did you do that? You call yourself a man or woman of God yet? My ears don't testify to that. There will always be people to denounce, to reject, and to explain away the faith and your acts of faithfulness in your life. It's one thing to speak it, but as James says, once you add your hands to it, it comes alive. And there are people watching for you to fail, to mess up. And to miss the mark. There will always be people like that. As we continue to look at this passage, I want, I want some of these things just to soak in today. Because even though the Lord led me to write this for those who are going into the next step of their life, we all are. We all are taking a new step tomorrow because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So Jesus, there in verse 4, he asked this question to them. He asked the question then as he is today. Are you bound by the law of the land or are you engaged with the law of love? Are you bound by the law of the land which says, don't speak that out loud. Don't say those things. Don't speak those words because you may hurt someone. There was a pastor. You know, that's what I love. I don't know where Pastor E went. He's over here somewhere. There he is. He took over a church when he was in Chandler, a church that at one time was running over 400 people. And um, when that pastor moved on, a new pastor came in and he made the decision. He made the decision to remove all the obstacles of Jesus from the church. Crosses, signs, posters, banners, all those things. He also decided never to really reveal the image of the Bible because it could be intolerant to some people. It could hurt some people's feelings and then they won't come back. That was his philosophy. So he effectively grew that church from 400 plus down to about 40. Some Sundays, 25. Because Jesus draws us. The word of God affects us. And without Jesus, without the word, we are nothing. And that church became nothing. I love the fact that the district superintendent knew that this wasn't working. And so Eli got to walk into a position with a handful of people and a group that had rejected the idea. So what did he do? Amazing. He brought Jesus back to the church. Is that 
Um, Jesus in the church? Seriously? Is that what we're supposed to be doing? Are we supposed to be meeting Jesus here? Are we supposed to be experiencing Jesus here? Are we supposed to be knowing and letting Jesus be known here so that when we go there, we can be Jesus? And all of a sudden, the church started to grow. Hmm. And grow and grow and grow. All because he took a stand for Jesus. Not knowing where it was going to go, not knowing the outcome, but he knew the right way. Do you know the right way? Do you know the right way in your homes? Do you know the right way at your jobs, maybe in your business? Do you know what's right? Do you know what needs to be done? I, I think I, I don't remember if I told this story here or not, but I, I tell it again because it really blew me away. I was in, um, <clears throat> when I was in Phoenix last time for a medical position, a procedure, they asked me to go to this Mediterranean restaurant. The doctor did. She said, you're really going to love this place. I need you. I want you to go. She wrote the number down, the address down. She sent me a link. And I thought, okay, Lord, for some reason I need to go. And so me and Brittany, we went to this Mediterranean restaurant uh, up in North Phoenix. And so I walk in. As soon as I walk in the door, there's Christian worship music playing. Holy water is what they were playing. I was like, wow. Here's my thought. I wonder if they know what station this is. <laughs> Did someone accidentally turn the knob? Because you just don't hear that. As soon as holy water was done, then a next song came on about forgiveness. And I went, wow, they probably actually set this on Christian music. So then I started looking around. And I started noticing they all had T-shirts that said, Jesus loves hum us. Awesome. Uh, it's called Saba's Mediterranean Restaurant, if you're ever in Phoenix, Saba. So I go in there, and I sit down, and, and the waiter comes up, and he says, um, what would you like to drink? And I said, well, I, water with lemon right now. I'm waiting on my daughter to come in. He said, do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? I said, what? And he said, I'm asking, do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? I said, well, yeah, yeah I, I do, actually, and so I was talking to him about my relationship, he, and he was talking about the relationship of the church. He said, you know, far too many churches today believe that this is a religion, and they've forgotten that this is a relationship. So I ask you the question, do you personally know Jesus? I said, yes, yes, I do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory, glory, and amen. And then I told him I was a pastor. Then, then it was all over. All right, Pastor Dave, oh! and he went and got this waitress and introduced her and this one over here. And he said, you need to come in the back and meet the owner. His name is George. George, Mediterranean food. Yeah, I, I could have guessed that one. But I, it was so, so then I started paying attention. Every table he took an order from, he asked that question. Man, in our world today, he was willing to stand up. And trust me, he truly stand out of those questions. Every, ta every table, every single person, he wanted to know. I got, you know what? I, I can't even tell you the last time I, I met or experienced that because that is so unusual in our world today for someone to be so demonstrative when it comes to the things. That were, he stood up, he stood out, and people took, so when I was leaving, I was thinking to myself, I sure hope this doesn't hurt their business. As I walked outside, there was 30 people in line trying to get in. Jesus makes the difference all the time, every time. And he will make a difference in your life. We don't always know where we're going. We don't always know what we're doing, but he does. And so we need to lean upon him. And then finally, Jesus completes that lesson and our lesson today. Jesus said to them in verse 5, watch and see for yourself. See what it is that I can do. And he called the man to stand up and stretch out his hand. Our faith will be defined by what we will stand for and what we will settle on. Did you hear me? Our faith will be determined by what we stand for 
and what we're willing to settle on. High school graduates, college, community, tech, disciple leaders here today who have went through that 16-week program. I want you to know it's time to stand up. It's time to stand out for your faith. One of the saddest statistics, I want you to hear this. One of the, I couldn't even believe this stat. One of the saddest statistics that I had heard in the last five years was this. Grads, listen to me. Young people, listen to me, please. 67% of all young people who were involved in church, a youth ministry or its programmings, no longer attend a church. 60, almost 70% of those who had the foundation who were building upon the foundation, who were believing in Jesus by faith, no longer attend the church. What happened? What happened was the world happened. And worldview began to infiltrate what they were raised on. But listen, Proverbs tells us, if you raise them in the ways of the Lord, when they're old, they won't depart. They'll be back. They'll be back. So what are we doing today to strengthen our faith? By your acts of faith, today, tomorrow, people will be restored. By your acts of faith today, others will find restoration. So are you willing to stand up and stand out? Try it. You might just like it, Sam. I would like...